I'm Commander Exegius, and today we're going to be looking at engineered modules. Specifically, what modules you can engineer and share between ships to create the maximum number of ships with the least amount of effort. As you'll be sharing modules between ships, this does mean a good bit of extra time swapping things around and the necessity of managing your storage. We'll look at 10 key core modules, 15 key optional and utilities, and a massive list of 75 total that will let you build a huge range of combat, exploration, and trade ships. Let's start with the basics, the 10 most useful core modules and blueprints to choose. Here we'll be skipping weapons, only focusing on core, then later defenses. These modules will allow you to build the following 11 ships. The Asp Explorer, Vulture, Chieftain, Challenger, and Crusader, the Federal Assault, Federal Drop, and Federal Gunships, the Fjord de Lance, Python, and Crate. Remember, these are fairly general purpose. As they well work very well for all these ships, you may decide on something more specialized given your weapon choices. For our 10 critical core modules, we'll start with power plants, where you'll want classes 5, 6, and 7A, each with armored thermal spread. You may need to check your specific builds as monstered or double braced may be preferred. For thrusters, you'll need only class 5 and 6, both with dirty drag drives. With frameshift drives, you'll need also only two, classes 4 and 5, with increased range and mass manager on the class 5, and deep charge on the class 4. For distributors, you'll need three, class 4, 6, and 7, each with charge enhanced super conduits. We won't worry about sensors or life support, as while they are important, they generally only offer weight savings that aren't necessary for anything other than fully optimized PvP builds. For our optional internals and utility mounts, we'll want 15, starting with shields, where we'll want a class 5 and 6 biweave with thermal blueprint and fast charge experimental, two heavy duty supercapacitor and two resistant augmented force block shield boosters give us a number of choices, with two high capacity heat sinks being very useful. Finally, we'll want some hull reinforcements. You'll want a single class 5 and four class 4 and a single class 3 heavy duty deep plate and a single class 2 thermal reflective to balance your resistances. It should be noted that you'll likely want to engineer heavy duty deep plate reactive surface composites for combat ships, but as these can't be shared, we aren't including them in this list. Now that we've looked at the basic list, let's take a look at the PvP Combat Pilot's dream list of 75 total modules. Again, we won't specifically cover base armor engineering, rather only the modules that can be shared. This list allows us to build 17 ships, covering almost all the combat ships available. These include the Corvette, Anaconda, Crate, Python, Federal Gunship, Assault, and Drop Ships, the Clipper, Fjord de Lance, the Challenger, Chieftain, and Crusader, the Vulture, Viper, DBX, Cobra 3, and Imperial Eagle. Starting as before, with power plants, we'll want armored class 3, 4, 6, 7, and 8, again likely with thermal spread, but possibly double braced or monster depending on your hardpoint and shield choices. You'll also want a single 4A overcharge thermal spread for a few of the smaller and shielded tank builds. For your thrusters, you'll want class 3 through 7, with the class 3 being performance enhanced and all with dirty drag drives. Frameshift drives will need classes 3 through 6, all with increased range with the class 3 and 4 receiving deep charge and the 5 and 6 getting mass manager. For our distributors, we'll need classes 3 through 8, all with charge enhanced and super conduits. Again, we won't be worrying about sensors or life support, however, you'll likely want lightweight on any fully optimized PvP ship you build. For our optional internals and utility mounts, we'll start with shields where we'll be focusing exclusively on biweaves. We'll want classes 3 through 7, all with thermal resistant and fast charge experimental, four heavy duty supercapacitor, two resistant augmented force block, and two thermal resistant thermoblock shield boosters mean we can build pretty much anything we'd like with very balanced resistances. For our hull reinforcements, we'll need two class 5, four class 4, two class 3, and two class 2, all with heavy duty deep plate. A class 2 and 3 thermal reflective will plug any resistance holes left by our reactive surface armor. Two high capacity heat sinks and chaff launchers round out our utility mounts. For some specialized builds, you may want point defense or ECM, but we won't worry about those here. For our heart points, the list could be vast. We're going to focus on the PvP meta of plasma and rails, but throw in a few bounty hunting options, such as lasers and multi cannons. 
Starting with those PAs, we'll want two huge, three large, and two medium, all with efficient blueprints. For your experimentals, you'll likely want a mix of target lock breaker and dispersal, but you could choose phasing. However, if you do, realize that you'll want all weapons to be phasing for it to be effective. You'll want some railguns, two medium and three small, all with long range. A mix of super penetrator and feedback cascade will complete them. For some bounty hunting weapons, you'll want two large and two medium gimbaled multi-cannons, overcharged with either incendiary or corrosive. A large and medium long-range fixed burst laser with scrambled spectrum is a great choice for some easy hit scan. A medium and small high-capacity drag missile rack are great to aggro NPCs, and a large and medium overcharged force shell cannons deal great damage and hilarity knocking your targets around. Finally, you can include two of my favorite and most misunderstood weapons, the Mine Launcher. Here you'll want either high capacity or rapid fire, I prefer the latter for piracy, one with ion disruption which will bring your targets to a stop for 10 seconds, and the other with reverb cascade which attacks and destroys the shield generator directly. There's nothing better than bringing down the prismatic shields of a cutter with a cobra or a sidewinder. While the full list is rather extreme and would take many hours of gameplay to complete, the short list shouldn't take more than 20 hours or so to gather materials for and engineer not a huge amount of time in elite terms. Depending on your goals and the ships you'd like to fly, you need only a subset of these modules. But if you enjoy flying a wide variety of ships, sharing modules between them means you can enjoy and try out fully optimized builds with a minimum of engineering work. If you're new to engineering, I hope you'll check out my complete series on blueprints, outfitting, the general process, and my specific ship build videos. As this is one of the most complex and deepest aspects of the game, it is highly subjective with many opinions on the subject. As such, I look forward to your thoughts in the comments below. Once again, this has been Commander Exegius reminding you to fly dangerously and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that detailed look at engineering modules, I hope you'll check out my other engineering videos and that you'll join me on my weekly live streams, Tutorial Tuesdays, and the Creators Roundtable each Friday, and that you'll consider supporting my efforts via Patreon.